Hey guys, welcome to Sunday Night Prayer Time. Um, today I'm going to cover a subject that's been on my heart for many years, really. It's a subject that I've never really heard a pastor talk about, probably for good reason. They probably don't want to touch it with a 10-foot pole, but I'm going to dig into it today. Um, if you've been listening to the podcast any time at all, you know that uh, I don't shy away from difficult subjects and um, I'm willing to take a stand on about anything. So we're going to touch on something today that uh, you probably have not heard talked about at least very much. Uh, but before I get into that, I want to go down a, a couple little rabbit trails first that are somewhat related to what we're going to get into. And you know, I want to start by talking about the Bible. You know, the Bible was written um, thousands of years ago, but it's it's the foundation for our Christian beliefs. And, you know, there's several different interpretations of the Bible, but uh, in researching the message that I'm going to give you today, I learned some things about the Bible that I want to share with you, and I've made a list here that, that I'm going to go over. So, uh, you know, the Bible is the best-selling book in the entire world. Uh, every year, there are 20 million copies sold in the United States alone. Um, it, it's the most read book in the entire world. Uh, the Bible was written over the course of 1,500 years. Um, you know, we've got the Old Testament and the New Testament. I don't know if you realize it or not, but there's a 400-year gap between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Um, but the total coverage is 1,500 years of you know when these uh, various books in the Bible were written. Uh, they were written by 40 authors on three different continents, and yet everything meshes together. Uh, the, the first writer, um, his information meshes with the last writer and everyone in between. So, uh, you know, it, it has to be God-inspired. Um, the shortest verse in the Bible is only two words, uh, Jesus wept, and that would be found in John 11.35. Um, the Bible has been translated into 704 different languages. And you know, I don't know about you, but I didn't even know there was 704 languages. But the Bible has been translated into every one of those. Um, there, the Bible um, supports a number of scientific facts. Um, lots of people have tried to disprove the Bible using science or whatever. But in fact science supports the Bible or vice versa. The Bible in, in many instances uh, supports a lot of science. Um, there are a total of 1,817 prophecies um, given in the Bible, and over half of those have already come true. Um, it's also, the last note I have here is the Bible is also the most stolen book in the world. More Bibles are stolen than any other book. I found that very interesting as well. But, uh, you know, as I, I've been thinking about this topic that I want to share with you for since I gave, uh, you know, my last uh, presentation on the Sunday night prayer time. And uh, it, like I said, it's something that's been on my heart for a long time. But then this week, you know, the uh, Trump verdict came in. And no, I'm not going to turn this political, but when the Trump verdict came in, I almost uh, changed the subject of what I wanted to talk about this week. But the more I thought about it, it really, what happened with Trump just kind of solidifies my stand on a lot of things because, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of people thinks that we can save this country, that we're going to elect Trump this fall in a landslide and and we're gonna get the country back on track and everything's gonna be fine um, after that. But I, I don't really, I, I don't agree with that. And the reason I don't agree with it is I don't think that follows scripture. Uh, you know, in uh, the book of Revelation, uh, the United States is not even there in the end. Um, I've heard a lot of interpretations. You know, Revelation um, is a very hard book in the Bible to understand. Um, I find it the most interesting book in the Bible, and I spent a lot of time, uh, you know, listening to different pastors and Bible scholars, whoever, and their interpretation of Revelation. And I think just about everyone that I've ever listened to or any material I've read on it 
they almost all agree that in the end, the United States is not there. It, it gets destroyed somehow. And I'm not going to get into that too much, but I do think it leads right in to the message that I want to deliver today. And it's something, again, that's been on my heart for a long time. So, you know, as a, uh, as a Christian and, you know, just a person that has a lot of friends and connections around the country, I, I've got friends in, in countless different denominations, uh, all Christian friends. I'm not talking about different religions, you know, Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, whatever. I'm talking about Christians and different Christian denominations. Um, th there's just a long list of them. And uh, in fact, my wife and I today at lunch, we went down a list uh, of different denominations and, and, and some of the things that uh, they practice or believe in that we don't quite understand. And that's my message today is, is we've got all these different denominations that Christian denominations and, and yet some of the things I see don't make sense to me because they're not supported by scripture and uh, you, you know the Bible is our foundation we build upon this Bible we build our Christian lives upon the words in this book and the direction that we're given and yet I see things from different denominations, and I'm not going to name a single denomination um, in this uh, presentation because I'm literally talking about a several different denominations that I, I see things from that I just don't understand, and I'm not here to criticize any of them. That's not my point of this, which I'll get into shortly, but I just want to, I want us to understand that you know, there's different interpretations, but I had a pastor one time. Uh, he's actually the pastor that married my wife and I and also baptized both of us many years ago. I heard him say many times, and I quote, people can go to hell believing a lie. And I think when it comes to Christian denominations, we've got this foundation but some denominations, they don't want to preach the whole word. There's things in there that they don't like, so they want to tear apart a piece of that foundation and throw it away and, and just not cover that because it's not comfortable for them or it doesn't agree with their, or their opinion doesn't agree with it or whatever. And, and then there's other denominations where they'll want to take this foundation and they'll want to add things to it. They'll want to throw their, their man-made uh, ideas on, on top of it. I know there's some religions that have even handbooks, and I shouldn't say religious denominations that have a handbook that they give out along with the Bible. And I just don't understand that at all. I think that, uh, you know, sometimes we get hung up on traditions uh, of certain denominations and such, and we lose the foundation that Christianity was built on. And uh, I'm going to share some scripture with you as I did some research for, for what I wanted to share with you. Um, Jesus says in the Bible that there will be many that come and uh, deceive and many will be deceived. So, you know, Matthew chapter 24, verse four, uh, Jesus says, see that no one leads you astray. And later in verse or chapter 24, he says, many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And then in the next book, Mark chapter 13, he almost repeats the, the same thing. And uh, verse 5 says, And Jesus began to, to say to them, See that no one leads you astray. And then in the very next verse, he says, Many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and lead many astray. And I just got to wonder, as I see some of these denominations and their, um, their traditions, um, are, are they really standing firm on this foundation? Or is there a lot of man-made ideas, you know, thrown into the mix? Um, you know, my prayer today for everyone listening is that you take a close look at where you're getting your message. Um, I, I'm not going to blast any denomination. That's not what I'm here for. But if you're going to a church that does not encourage you to test what they are saying, if your pastor is not saying, challenging you to test his word against scripture, you, you may want to take a good close look 
at what exactly he's saying. Um, I, I know the the pastor at our church, uh, Pastor Kenny, who passed away um, about a year and a half ago, he always continually challenged the congregation to test whatever he said against Scripture. Um, he did not ever add to the Scripture. He did not ever take away from the Scripture. If it was there, he preached it, no matter how many toes he might step on. Um, and that's... Uh, I just come to you with a challenge to to uh, test whatever you're being told against Scripture. Um, I think a lot of uh, denominations try to complicate things, and it's really very simple. Um, you, you know, the Jesus makes it simple. It, it's right here in His Word, um, but we got to live on. We got to stand on, on this Word and, and not take from it. Um, and throw away and not add to it our own opinions. So that's my prayer for you guys in that uh, you will take a close look because, you, you know, with what happened with Trump this week, I just, uh, I don't believe we're ever going to turn this country around. I, I believe that we're seeing scripture being fulfilled. You know, I talk about all those prophecies that have already been fulfilled, but there's several that have not yet. And I think we're going to see those, um, you know, fairly soon. Um, I have no idea. The Bible clearly says no one will know the day or the hour, but uh, I want you to be prepared. Um, you know, the Chasing Giants podcast is kind of, we've, we've almost become a family and hear from listeners on a daily basis. Um, you guys share in your uh, successes and you, you guys have got questions. Um, you support us, Lester's feet, everything we've done. And, uh, you know, as, as I see our country falling apart and, and I realize that in the end of this book, the United States is not there in the end of this book, I, I see the direction we're headed and I want to make sure that each of you is prepared for eternity. So stand on this foundation, um, open the pages, test whatever you're being told. I, I just see so much out there being done that makes no sense at all uh, it, it, when you test it against Scripture that I don't want anyone to be deceived. Clearly, I've shared Scripture with you. Jesus told us that many will be deceived, and I don't want you guys to be some of those who are uh, deceived. So with that, I'm going to say a short prayer and, and end this week's uh, session. Father God, I just ask that you you be with everyone that has tuned in and listened uh, to this session of the Sunday night prayer time. I ask that you be with them and their families. I, I just ask that the men who are listening to this, that you give them guidance to lead their families, that they be prepared uh, for what's coming, and especially for eternity, that uh, they have the wisdom to turn to your word to test anything that they are being told. Um, Lord, I, I thank you for their support. I thank you for the platform that you've given us. I thank you for my partner, Terry, who has went out and started this Sunday night prayer thing so that, you know, we can reach lost souls. The, the platform that you've given us, that's one of our, our main goals is to reach lost deer hunters. And I just hope that you will bring more to us and, um, you know, allow them to see the truth. Lord, please be with everyone this week. Bless them. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, guys. Um, appreciate your support of the podcast and Sunday night prayer time. Um, wish you guys the best this summer. Thank you.